What I want to do is I'm going to go through your everything code, but we're going to stop in a couple key areas to make sure that people really understand this. So Raul has a, a, a theory that everything is related to one phenomena. And once you understand it, things get a lot easier to predict. So here we go. It's a quote from Raul. What I had suddenly stumbled across in the everything code was the fact that the global central banks had probably agreed to get in this video, Real Vision CEO and venture capitalist joins Impact Theory founder and self-improvement YouTuber Tom Bilyeu to discuss macroeconomics and how to un yourself. Raul starts by explaining that contrary to popular opinion that a recession is coming, he thinks we're already in a recession, and that recession has now become cyclic as opposed to the acute crashes that happened in and before 2008. Raoul explains that the entire world has realized that a recession can be stalled by simply printing more money. He says this realization, in combination with the timing of interest payments on debts, has created a vicious cycle where the economy cannibalizes itself to kick the can down the road. However, for the people in the lower half of the socio-economic hierarchy, that's not the worst of it. But he also shares how you can save yourself from it. Let's dive in. We'll come on to the outcomes in a bit. What we are doing since 2008 is mutualizing the bankruptcy of the system by the debasement of currency. You can either raise taxes, which they're trying to do too, but they're also printing currency via the mechanism called quantitative easing, which is actually debasing the currency, which means that every time they do it, asset prices optically rise. They don't actually rise because if you look at the central bank balance sheet and divide all assets by it, so you're changing the denominator, it's normally US dollars, but when you use the balance sheet, you say, okay, this is the purchasing power of dollars. So how many dollars are in the economy or excess printed? And what you find is something like the S&P 500 has gone nowhere. Real estate, gold, gone nowhere. And there's only two assets that have actually outperformed, which were crypto and technology, which is why we all feel like even though stocks are going up and our 401k is going up, nobody's getting any Richer. We all know this intuitively that we're not actually getting richer because the stocks I sell doesn't buy me more of a house. So what the f what was the point of buying the stocks? The value of my assets aren't going up. But that is a mutualization, which is bad because it mutualizes amongst people who don't have assets. So you'll never be able to buy an asset, which is why when you speak to a millennial now, they're like, we can't afford a house. Why? Because they came in to the labor force after the Fed started monetizing or lowering the value of the denominator. So property's got more and more expensive for them. It's impossible for them to buy property, really, unless they're really lucky in the workforce or in entrepreneurship or whatever it is. But generally speaking, it's become impossible. And everything has got more and more expensive assets have because of this optical illusion. But wages haven't gone up, remember, right? That's the key thing. Thing. Assets are going like this. We were doing this before because of demographics and it was making people pissed. And now we're doing it from debasement and there's there's no way around it. So what debasement does on the other hand, remember it makes the price of assets look like it's going up. This is why you can't have a banking crisis of the order of magnitude that existed before 2008. The reason being is you just print money the moment you see it and voila, everything goes up. So I don't think you can have a systemic collapse because the value of the assets can never go down enough. This is what most people can't get their heads around. We'll play out the future a bit because there are ways where it could go even more wrong than this ongoing mutualization amongst the people of the costs. Well, this is wrong because it's insidious. You don't see it, you don't notice it, you just sense it, right? That's what's going on. But it could lead to another outcome. The other outcome could be a total loss of control of the financial system. So far, Raul has explained why the government prints more money and why what would have been considered investing 10 or 15 years ago no longer works. He re-emphasizes that the occurrence of a significant crash is extremely unlikely and that instead we'll have to deal with a slow but certain debasement of currency and optically rising asset prices. So it doesn't it actually reflects today. As I explained before, a thing that's actually driving the S&P 500 is the Fed balance sheet. So it's an optical illusion. It's a money illusion. You're readjusting the price. So that is what's going on. And so then when you understand that, and it's 97%, you understand that nothing matters apart from this liquidity, which is what I've been trying to tell people is sorry, all your economic models are wrong. Yes, you need to forecast the business cycle to know where you are in the probability of printing money cycle. 
But that's all that matters, and it drives assets. And that's why people right now are getting very angry because the stock market's going up and they're like, yeah, but don't you know there's a recession? Yeah, I know that the answer to recession is more cowbell, printing of more money. For emphasis, Raoul Paul has reiterated that the apparent positive performance of stocks and other assets this year is solely due to a substantial influx of liquidity resulting from currency debasement. In simple terms, stocks are going up, but not enough to counteract the debasement of currency, so investing in the S&P 500 will optically increase your wealth, but not make you any richer. Fortunately, he briefly talks about two investing channels that have the ability to grow your wealth. I went down this journey that you're going down now in 2012, and that journey led me to crypto. I saw it and I knew that this was the answer. And that's why I first bought Bitcoin in 2013, was exactly this, is once you see what has happened, regardless of how it ends, whether it ends in slow, ongoing death of economic vibrancy or a spectacular blow up, the answer is you need to transition to what I call the Bitcoin life raft or the parallel financial system. Mm. It's there and you can participate with $1 or a billion dollars. Raoul has provided unique and remarkable insight into macroeconomics and how you can protect yourself from the crisis that we're already experiencing. His unique opinion that the conventional idea of a recession may be a thing of the past is, however, just as concerning as the idea of a normal recession, if not more frightening. As Raoul has explained, even sound investments like gold will not make you rich. The future looks extremely grim for the next generation, as they'll be born into worsening debasement. The only sliver of good news is that you can, at least on an individual level, exempt yourself and loved ones. What do you think about Raoul's thesis of cyclical recession? To see the latest in crypto news, watch this video here.